Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our exploration of Nier Automata's weapon stories. We're just about to finish up the spears and then move on to the fist weapons. Last time we did Virtuous Dignity, and this time we're going to continue with Cruel Arrogance. The dark, hideous lance was crafted by a beautiful female artisan. As people far and wide praised its design, the artisan's apprentice grew jealous and slew her, the lance itself soon vanishing into the mists of time. The lance's second owner was a puppeteer, who crafted a clockwork doll capable of doing nearly anything. When he put the lance in the doll's hands, she lashed out and pierced the puppeteer's skull right between the eyes. The third owner was an infant prince who was gifted the lance by the queen regent. She died soon thereafter, and on the night of her funeral, the lance vanished from the infant's room, leaving behind only a tiny corpse in the crib. The fourth owner was a simple, honest man who wanted to aid his sickly daughter. He gave all to this cause, including his very existence and that of all else in the world. So what's interesting about that last little bit in uh, sort of paralleling the end of Virtuous Dignity in our last episode is that this one is presenting the owner of the spear as being reminiscent of adult Nier from Nier Gestalt, uh, whereas the difference between the two main characters, one adult man for the West and one young boy for uh, Japan, uh, based on which kind of character we as uh, audiences respond to more by and large. And here we have a story where pretty much anyone who ends up wielding this uh, spear ends up committing some atrocious acts of violence. Whereas the previous one showed people who didn't use the spear but, or at least when they did, were attempting to commit some great virtue. Uh, and yet still succumb to violence themselves. And as a result, the story that we get is essentially just one of, once again, violence being unavoidable once you commit to the path and ending, as Nier does, uh, committing the ultimate sacrifice, uh, ending that cycle uh, entirely by removing yourself, removing any ego that could come up could come across with the violence. And finally, moving on to Machine Spear. My name is Plato1728. I am a failure of a machine. I was designed for combat, but I can't use weapons. Everyone makes fun of me and my life is horrible. I am a dumb machine. I got lost during battle and ended up in some kind of factory. I found a whole pile of dolls discarded there. They share the same fate that I do. I am a foolish machine. Today I had to fight at that factory. All of the dolls got completely destroyed, crushed by my friends and foes, who can do nothing but fight, fight, fight. I activated my cannon and shot everyone there. I'm not sure why I did that. All I know is I decided to fight because I'm just a stupid, broken machine. And that's very on the nose. So uh, Plato1728 is our main character from the story at the end of the DLC for Nier Automata that we hear from, hear about while we fight through the various arenas that have been placed in the game. Uh, whereas I had a separate video uh, detailing the uh, philosophy that was presented in that DLC uh, here, it's really, again, focusing on this narrative of violence and very directly putting the nail on the head, saying, hey, you're being violent because you are valuing things uh, that may or may not have uh, the worth that they should. You shouldn't put the value of something so high as to say that you can destroy any and other, all other values that you come across. And that's exactly how this story ends. He wasn't able to perform in the way he needed to as a machine which already put its value in a warlike culture. And the end result was that he formed this attachment to leftover ceramic dolls that humans had made. Uh, and when those dolls were damaged, he lashed out 
and he destroyed everyone that was around him, attempting to right some wrong with violence. And the end result was nothing changed. The violence continued. The machines who had their attached uh, beliefs about what was valued and how they should act and how they should continue waging this war, trying to destroy other things, it got turned back on them, but nothing changed. The cycle of violence continues. And the story very clearly says, I'm not sure why I did that. All I know is I decided to fight because I'm a stupid, broken machine. And it's very literally telling the reader, if you succumb to the cycle of violence, you are only acting as a biological animal, as a organic machine that falls into this programming and can only commit violence. And that's the only result. You don't get anything positive, anything real out of it. All right, moving on to combat bracers. Start with the bare fist. No story for the bare fists. That's the main story. Angel's Folly. Once there was a demon who held an affinity for angels. He dreamed of serving alongside them and their god, yet cursed the impossibility of it all. Then, one day, he came to earth, bringing himself a step closer to heaven. An angel was sent to slay the demon. When the evil one saw his foe, he burst into tears and revealed his plan. Please, the demon begged, you must give me a set of white wings for my very own. The angel agreed to trade a set of white wings for the head of another demon. Overjoyed, the demon killed one of his own and plucked the head right off its still warm body. The angel then led the demon to heaven, where he underwent centuries of the cruelest tortures imaginable. Finally, the pain was so great that he lost consciousness, at which his dark wings turned the promised shade of white. That's interesting. The angel gave a catch-22 test. Essentially, hey, commit this atrocity to prove that you are deserving of the thing that you seek. And the demon committed this atrocity, committed this act of evil, thinking it was exactly what the angel wanted, only to find that by doing so, he committed the wrongdoing and was punished for it when he reached heaven. And at some point, when all of his punishments were finished and his life as a demon ends, he gets what he really wanted. He gets the purity by, uh, by committing to, his con to the consequences and accepting the punishment. I at first thought that this story was going to be a kind of uh, nothing's black and white sort of deal. Demons and angels can uh, both have their cruelty, and that's there in the same, in some capacity, in that you shouldn't have a completely absolutist worldview, and yet at the same time, uh, it continues that themes of being too focused on your goal and not watching the actions you take to get there will result in the goal being different, uh, what you actually uh, reap being different than what you intend. And let me just say, this is one of my favorite pictures. I like the balance between light and dark and how they mix together. It's very yin-yang, uh, very great. And we're going to finish up this video with Demon's Cry. All right, once there was a gentle angel who came to earth to provide salvation for those in need. Whether it was curing illnesses, offering blessings, or cheering the sad, he was always there when needed. The angel, however, provided aid to sinners and non-believers as well, an act which was strictly forbidden. Each time he did so, a single white feather would fall away from his glorious wings. One day, the angel came across a young girl with an illness that pained her deeply, but he could do nothing to help the child, for all his feathers had long since fallen off. The angel cursed both himself and the cruelty of the world. The resulting hatred stained his body and his wings, turning them both black as night. Then, crying tears of blood, 
he brought his hands to the girl's neck. So this is a story of self-sacrifice, overcoming a what is alluded to as a legalistic ethic. You can't uh, help the people who are sinners and non-believers, and yet he decides, no, I will sacrifice myself, my abilities, and my angelic nature to do what I believe is right, to help people even if they aren't deserving of help, because the very nature of being, uh, the very nature of being a conscious human is worth it, is value enough in itself to deserve respect, to deserve help. And uh, it's a very humanist ethic in that way. But in sacrificing to make this humanist ethic exist in a world that did not allow it, he became more demon-like, uh, to parallel the previous story. He Whereas the demon turned white in accepting his punishments, this angel turns black in uh, sacrificing uh, his quote-unquote stereotypical goodness uh, in order to do what is truly good, what is truly helpful to others. Uh, it, of course, does a quick allusion to the previous near by uh, hearkening a young girl with an illness, though, of course, not every girl that is mentioned in these stories is, in fact, Yona. It's just referencing children who are sick and dying. Uh, and the angel, having lost all of his ability to see another way out, to see a different path to goodness, still tries to fulfill the girl's wish, but in a misguided way. Uh, because he no longer has this magic MacGuffin, he ends up taking her life in order to stop her pain. And whether or not that's right or wrong, it's really impossible to say with the information that we have. Uh, all that we know is that he attempted to do good and had to commit something horrible and sad in order to pursue that. And on that very sad note, we're going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a while since I've recorded these, so I'm glad that we're going to finish up. Next time, we will probably just move right on through these last group of fists because we won't want to split up three and three just to stretch out the episodes longer than they need to go. Uh, but I hope you'll join me next month for the next one. And I should say the YouTuber things. Go ahead and click all of the buttons down below the video. Uh, sharing, liking the video, especially leaving a comment. All of these things help more people see the video if they're interested and help support the channel as well. This channel is still small. The only way we can grow is with your help. And as always, stay true.